okay my dear students um, I'm going to talk about today uh, I'm going to talk about uh, you see a very important lecture today um, that is uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the use usage best theory all right and mostly if you see there that according to Thomas the use based uh, theory you know uh, to linguistic communication may be summarized in, in two uh, aphorism okay uh, meaning is used and structure emerges from use uh, but I actually I'm going to uh, just take you now a little bit of its background and, and, and you know here uh, this is actually uh, the lecture you can see you can see from professor G Laniami and she was actually a PhD student there okay uh, I just have to uh, uh, skip it there but you can uh, yourself read it so that you can understand what does this statement mean and this is actually the photograph of Chomsky you can see it uh, Chomsky he was a big man uh, and he was a you know he was a revolutionary man in, in the field of linguistics so we can say that uh, Chomsky he's really done superb and he rather revolutionized actually the linguistic field you know so therefore we can see that Chomsky has done a lot um, uh, l l let me just uh, tell you something there, all right? Um, you can see that uh, like any other uh, type of learning, language learning is not a linear process, remember. Language, I mean, it's not an easy process. It's, uh, it's not uh, like uh, the language learning does not take place like, um, you know, um, any other field in a straight way. But it's it's a very complex phenomenon. Therefore, it cannot be deemed as predictable. So linear process means that a thing which goes in a linear fashion, you know. So it's many models of SLA. Some model of SLA, I mean, they may be linear, uh, but uh, so far language learning is concerned, it's not. Is Larson uh, Freeman? He is another uh, scholar and uh, another expert, and long. Uh, and another is called that is long state that there are at least 40 theories okay of SLA but here we mention those one which have caused more impact in the field of SLA as well as pre okay uh, and then we have to just look at them as pre and Chomsky and approaches all right um, these are actually the different books you can see that uh, theories and second language acquisitions uh, and introduction you can search this book yourself um, alternative approaches to second language acquisitions still you can just go for this book as well second language acquisition uh, an introductory course second language uh, you know you can just go for that that can help you there um, Susan M. Geis is, is the writer and decoding Chomsky silence and revolutionary politics uh, this is actually written on Chomsky because Chomsky is a said he is a very influential figure and he has done tremendous uh, services to linguistic uh, but before we are we actually come to uh, usage ba usage based theory of linguistics you know we have to just talk about a little bit about this universal grammar uh, and and late well in the field of linguistic after the nativist okay nativist who claims who are the nativists who claims that children are born with some linguistics knowledge the people who believe that children are born actually with their uh, with in born linguistic knowledge um, is 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 strong actually as uh, nativist all right and the M and who are the empiricist empiricist uh, there the people remember these are the terms which quite frequently come you see in the linguistics all right you must have been hearing these terms there and the empiricists uh, they assert remember who are the empiricists they assert um, uh, children acquire language from linguistic experience from their exposure something questions in Chomsky minds okay but Chomsky um, obviously uh, when actually uh, if I have just I have just discussed this thing with you people that when B.F. Skinner 
in verbal behaviors based his uh, behaviorism theories you know and they concluded that language learning actually comes is a result of uh, you know is a result of exposure to the environment and stimulus in response uh, theory was uh, very much there so uh, and, and 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 then as actually as a, as a challenge chomsky actually raised objections on it and then something questioned in chomsky mind and what was that all right uh, obviously chomsky he wanted uh, to ask a question that if, if everything comes from exposure and environment then uh, he and then he talks about late creations okay uh, in certain situations in which child is not presented with any consistent linguistics model they appear to have the capacity to invent remember um, I mean the child as, as we said that they the children they are uh, you know the children they are genetically pre-programmed to acquire language so I mean they have the capacity already to invent some uh, aspects of language this give insight for Chomsky and Nate Chomsky and Nate of language all right um, originally um, he puts forward language acquisition device to refer to uh, innate mechanism of language learning and late he illustrate huge universal grammar is a way to introduce his idea okay Chomsky believes uh, remember Chomsky believes that UG is a special device of human brain which can help people learn language quickly all right it is in unconscious I mean oh, what is it uh, my dear sorry uh, for a little bit um, uh, distractions I haven't taken tea uh, so I'm going I'll also be taking tea actually um, and will be mm, giving you lecture as well mm. so it is in unconscious and potential remember potential knowledge which exists in the human brain without learning and determines the existing sphere of, of human language so what 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 it, I mean the Chomsky believes that UG that is a special device all right which is uh, which is uh, which is wired actually in the human mind and it is unconscious in potential and it has I mean the power of generation generation uh, generating knowledge okay uh, uh, and without any uh, learning actually from all, and which actually determines the exist there is something uh, you know universal uh, which determines the human language right now you see here your sure grammar UG the theory suggests that now look at this the theory suggests that linguistic ability manifest itself without being taught and that there are properties that all natural human languages share it is a matter of observation and experimentation to determine precisely what abilities or innate and what properties are shared by all language it has superbly been defined here I think you have to just look at this um this universal grammar theory you know it tells that there is a capacity there is laid there is some knowledge which is innate there is linguistic ability we term in, in simple terms linguistic ability which manifest mean which shows itself without being taught and that these are properties that all natural human language share I mean uh, these uh, you, you can see that these linguistics uh, you know properties and, and and this linguistic ability it shows and manifests we cannot see it as we said that in the beginning that it is unconscious but uh, but potential and how can we know it I mean we can 
we can we can see that through observation and experimentation to determine precisely what abilities are innate and what properties are shared by art. And you can find the same thing there actually in all languages. Because some many uh, experiments have been done from across actually uh, the languages of the world. They are, mm, that what kind of world the student, I mean, they produce in the initial stages of their life. They have been explained, if, if, if you remember. Different linguistic stages are there. Okay, and then uh, briefly, uh, since I have, this is not the lecture of the day that we to get focus more on UG and UG because there a lot a lot has been said actually on it. The base today's lecture is is actually usage based theory by Tomasello, Tomasello, and uh, we have to just look at that. Um, but my dear student. Um, uh, but a little bit background has been shared here in order to refresh uh, your thoughts and your knowledge there. Okay, so what is S SLA and why it is? What is SLA and why it is important? All right, we have to just talk on it. SLA becomes a field in its own right since 19. 60 okay the study of SLA focuses on the de on developing knowledge and the use of language by children okay and the use of language by children and adults who already know at least one other language in 1980 remember it is possible to read nearly everything that have written that has been written about SLA theory and related studies to keep up with the newest current ideas okay um my dear um then uh, there was a logical problem with SLA and learnable and learnability problem okay many linguists they are Researching on there that whether UG, UG are available to L2 learning or not. I mean, this, this is, this is a debatable issue still. Many, many researchers, they are doing, you know, researches on it, whether UG is available for the learning of second language. Or not so with regard to SLA the question is more complicated on one hand the first language is available to L2 learner on the other hand the end result of L2 learning is not native like competence is it is the case in L2 acquisition so we can say that the first language L1 is different than L2 so i mean the native likeness competence is not available in the case of two so thus other research mainly focuses on the extent that l2 learners have access to the innate system right some other research mainly focuses that l2 learners have access to the innate system and they have obviously uh, some uh, access to the innate system especially um, the concept of principle and parameters. Uh, I mean, this is uh, the principle and parameters have been explained uh, to you people, and I hope that uh, uh, they are not to be used here. All right, then uh, I, I'm to quickly because uh, my basic lecture today that is uh, uh, using best theory. Different, uh, different types of hypotheses, okay, to innate system. Uh, the first hypothesis that is direct accessibility. If UG can be used in the first language, so it also can be applied in L2 learning, all right? L2 learner makes full use of UG. This is one theory. 
including the part which is not reflected in his mother tongue means even the part which is not reflected in his mother tongue that can also be excess this is one theory and second uh, theory that is indirect accessibility Yuji works in Isale through the grammar of mother tongue I mean through the grammar of mother tongue Yuji works when the parameter setting of L2 is different from that of the first language so L2 learning cannot use the parameter which has been um, you know lost actually in Yuji and then uh, the inaccessibility hypothesis it denies all the influence of UG on SLA assuming that the parameters of UG have been set and the process of first language which cannot be reset in the second so you can see that researches are still going on it some people say that uh, even the learners of second language uh, acquisition have direct access to the UG some people say no that the direct access is not possible but it, it uh, I mean the native speaker they have got only the indirect uh, access uh, to the UG and another uh, hypothesis means that it altogether denies all the influence of UG on second language acquisitions okay so my dear uh, the problem of UG in, 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 in SLA, it's uh, very important. Um, you have to just look at that. As L1 acquisitions is natural in unconscious. Uh, we all are aware of it. While SLA is conscious, because when we are learning a second language, we become conscious. Cognitive ability of children is immature, while that of adult is mature. You see, uh, when the children they learn, but I think uh, they learn superbly, all right, and uh, and especially the same thing. Though the mind the mind mature, but still the the, the speed of um, learning is not happening that way. That is as it happens in the first language acquisitions. Okay, and then uh, the environment of L1 acquisition and data are different. You see. Um, I mean, you are naturally exposed to the linguistic environment in the first language acquisition, while uh, in second language acquisitions, sometimes uh, you may not be um, exposed to the natural environment. That is highly learning. Uh, 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 that is high learning environment, you know, and different inputs. Uh, L1 um, uh, L1 inputs occur through spoken language, while L2 input is mingle of spoken written as well as notation okay means that uh, L, uh, L2 uh, basically involves almost many many things okay but in L1 inputs only spoken language only the children actually they are exposed to the spoken language and uh, if the children are exposed to uh, seven structurally different languages still they can be uh, picking them with ease all right and in L1 acquisition, there is no interference from other language, but L2 learners use his mother tongue constantly. I know, um, yes, uh, is uh, the lecturer no. says, I know you are bored, but be patient, uh, please. You have to be patient okay mm. because um mm. patient is highly required please um i'm the question here mm. mm. and this is a psycho linguistic remember This is a technically really um, complicated field. It requires patience. It requires uh, effort on your part, and you will be doing the best. All right. Mm. Sorry for taking a little bit uh, fast here. 
I am still continuing and now my dear students the lecture of the day and that I have just uh, is, is I just said that I have even shared with you people uh, these handouts and these uh, you know things uh, from here uh, because this is a little bit important that's why I have just uh, you know um, decided to teach it uh, from here okay and now what is usage based approaches to SLM you have to look at this the usage based theory of language acquisition was introduced by Michael Tomasello right in 2003 so according to him according to him this is in input based learning you have to just look at this this is what this is my dear this is input based learning okay this is what this is input based learning and various approaches to um, and uh, to isole can be labeled is usage based all right uh, this is actually the new psychology of language uh, this is uh, from this gentleman uh, you see the okay edited by Michael Tomasil all right now we come actually to the usage based or exemplar based prototypes learning okay mm. uh, you should keep in mind is I have told you in the very beginning that there is a book of psycholinguistic which has been written by Insep Taylor and she has explained almost everything if you are further interested to know psycholinguistics in detail so that is the best book you can go for that and you can find that book will uh, you know that book will uh, believe me will give you a great insight in, into the psycholinguistic and I think by now you must have bought that book indeed but uh, I, I think if you uh, haven't bought it yet please go for that and that uh, these prototypes and everything has been explained over there so but anyhow here I'm going to little bit explain this prototype prototype means uh, you know an, an, a kind of sample a kind of pattern uh, which which just you know which just uh, is just before you is a model in front of and you just try to follow that and you you are actually uh, following some of the features of that prototypes there all right much of our language use is, is formulaic all right from means that is that we recycle we, we recycle means uh, like uh, like any mathematical you have a formula and that formula is is, is applied um, you see for making different uh, you know expression and for solving different actually um, uh, for solving uh, different uh, I mean different things okay and different other questions and sums so we have to memorize from prior use so language learning is in large parts implicit implicit mean which cannot be felt all right in the sense of taking place without the learning being consciously aware, aware of it means the the, the, the language actually um, though we see and hear it in the physical form but actually it is also linked to the unconscious part of our brain which we don't see we do not have the ability to see that so therefore uh, we can say that language basically is, is implicit and nature all right um therefore uh, without uh, the learner they do not know what is, is exactly happening they do not they, they are not aware of the process they are not conscious of, but just uh, a phenomenon is is happening all right uh, according to UB theory language structure emerges okay from language use all right a children build their language see uh, this is very clear their language relying on their general cognitive skill okay mostly uh, they just uh, pick them up I mean, and uh, their cognitive skill are very important over there okay a uh, C here this is the human mind okay and now we move on to the UB uh, main hypothesis UB approaches assume that all language knowledge remember is constructed 
on the basis of input so the UB mean usage based hypothesis you know uh, stresses actually on uh, uh, you know stretches uh, stretch stretches actually on it uh, stresses sorry uh, uh, UB approaches assume that all language knowledge is constructed on the basis of input means uh, stress is placed on an in, in, in input input is given and then output is there and learning take place implicitly during meaning meaning focused input processing okay uh, another the relationship between quantity and quality all right of input is important how much quality qualitative input is given all right because the input to which adult two learners are exposed to is fundamentally different in both quantity and quality from L1 input which is typically available to so again the point is raised here that the input given to the young children for learning the first languages is different from the input given to the adults for learning the second languages okay um UB main principles and theoretical principle uh, basis you have to just look at that what is its theoretical basis according to Tomasiro 2003 the usage based approach to linguistic communication may be summarized in two principles which I have just uh, said it before all right um, no, meaning meaning is use all right and structure emerges from the use all right the first principle represent how people use linguistic uh, conventions to achieve social ends okay and the second principle represented how meaning based how meaning based grammatical constructions emerge from individual x of language use so uh, combining the two approaches my dear uh, uh, Tomasilo proposed you know just uh, Tomasilo proposed a usage based theory of language acquisition he stated my dear student he stated that children acquire language equipped with two sets of cognitive skills okay what are the, those cognitive skills uh, the first that is intention reading okay what children must do to determine the goals are intentions of mature speaker when they use linguistics conven uh, conventions to achieve them. I mean remember they the children they try to uh, you know the in, in the intention reading actually uh, uh, in this cognitive skill they try to know the intentions of mature speakers okay when they use their linguistic conventions to achieve the social ends all right so and uh, a second uh, principle of actually this is you know, what children must do in order to extract abstract linguistic construction from the individual utterances I mean they try to you know they, they, they try to uh, farm out they try to construct such uh, you know linguistic construction uh, from the individual utterances okay uh, on the basis of abstractions okay therefore we can say that this theory has two main dimensions functional all right and grammatical right okay and further we move that uh, main approaches of UB to SLA remember and uh, these are the main approaches of uh, you uh, usage based theory to SLA exposure to input is necessary for SLA exposure is must a good deal of SLA happens incidentally remember this this happens incidentally a good deal of SLA happen and learners come to know more than what they have been exposed to in the input they try to um, they learn more than what input is given to them and learners output speech often follows predictable paths with predictable stages so here uh, though uh, in the beginning we uh, just to talk about that uh, you know that UG uh, uh, the hypothesis that uh, some people say it is directly available to the native speaker for the second language some say that it is indirectly available 
and the third said that it is it all not available and this, so in and predictable uh, acquisitions of given structure and SLA is variable across linguistic subsystems okay uh, notable points about this uh, 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 you know this uh, UB theory of SLA first one must always begin with communicative functions I remember um, actually it it, uh, it it begins with the communicative functions okay so even in early months of age humans and fans communicate in some fairly sophisticated way example uh, uh, Gracia by pointing by pointing all right and second when we turn to children's early linguistic communication the most basic unit basic unit of linguistic experience is not <coughs> the word but the utterance all right it's not uh, uh, you see uh, I mean uh, you, you cannot actually uh, you, you cannot say it with full guarantee that whatever the child uh, is going to or whether uh, uh, to rightly pronounce the word or not, but the real thing which matters in that state that is actually the utterance okay um, and third based on the theory a linguistic construction is prototypically proto prototypically a unit of language that comprises multiple linguistic elements used together for a relative uh, you know uh, uh, coherent communicative functions okay and finally the key theoretical point is that it when we conceptualize children's early grammatical competence we see that SLA, uh, SLA acquisition processes needed or not so different from those we need in L1 wording. Okay. Uh, then there are some common misunderstanding about this theory. Uh, at the heart of most uh, misunderstanding is the idea that usage-based anal analysis only do numbering, uh, crunch crunching, with with too much of focus on the effects that frequency. Of constructions okay means uh, the construction are frequently repeated and other goes place in the learning process but remember no usage based theorists would claim that frequency is the only factor impacting SLA all right in fact there is a lively debate among usage based theorists about the exact role frequency effects play in the complex network um, you can see that um, uh, you, you just you just find and can see that uh, uh, debate still going on there, right? Nothing uh, can be said with uh, you know, um, I mean, with perfect uh, faith, but still we can say that actually uh, the debate is going on there. Some objections uh, to UB uh, theory. Remember, the three most uh, common objections they are on UB that it cannot deal with more complex constructions. Okay, I mean, uh, the, when the when when the constructions of sentences are lingui linguistic constructions, you know, when they are more complex, especially those involving two verbs and syntactic embedding, then it it, it becomes a really problem. Okay, uh, it cannot. I mean, that use cannot be made. Uh, uh, I, I, the meaning cannot be then made actually on the use of such complex uh, constructions okay and it cannot specify how generalization process is to be constrained okay and then we say that uh, it does not deal with the so-called poverty of stimulus all right uh, this poverty of stimulus uh, this is very much uh, there in uh, linguistics but uh, let me explain it again to you people. You can see there. All right. Um, poverty of stimulus is the controversial argument from, uh, you know, from linguistic. Remember, what is it? That, uh, that children are not exposed to rich enough uh, data within their linguistic environment to acquire every feature of their language. This is considered evidence contrary to the empiricist idea that language is learned solely through experience. So um, you just cite that a poverty, uh, poverty of the stimulus means um, stimulus is not 
the only solution given to children for learning the full language in depth. I mean that uh, if you give uh, children uh, to rich linguistic data, right, with their, uh, within their environments, and you think that every feature of their language will be achieved, so that is actually wrong. And so it comes in contrast with the, imper uh, the imperialist, empiricist idea that language is learned solely through experience. Okay, so uh, uh, this is something regarding uh, actually usage based, but anyhow, uh, the conclusion actually of this, uh, the, 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 the final point is that language uh, is a complex adaptive system. I mean, God has given a very adaptability uh, to the humans for language learning that comprises the interactions of many players, means that people who want to communicate and uh, a world to be talked about, so it operates across many different levels, different humans configurations and different time scales. So taking out one of these levels, a different patron emerges and a different conclusion is, is reached. But nevertheless, like other complex dynamic system, there are many systematic actions that emerge to form the things that SLA theory should explain. What it means in some people are, we can say that language is, is basically a very complex phenomenon. There, there are, uh, you know, there are a myriad of other, uh, you know, factors which involve. So you cannot wholly solely depend on a single pattern. Thus, we can say that uh, 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 there are certain theories in linguistic researches, you know, which uh, which talk about uh, different aspects of there, but there you cannot find a single whole theory and, and, and hypothesis which can, uh, you know, uh, perfectly uh, can say, uh, you know, uh, all the things about a single aspect of language. So we can say that there are still things which are, are. so I think this is the end of this uh, today. I hope that uh, by listening this again and again, um, this lecture and by just reading it, you know, and the points I'm giving you, so you will uh, get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, stimulation from it. And these are actually the references. And uh, so thank you very much for your, uh, you know, for your, uh, thank you very much for your, for all that. Um, patience, because uh, uh, normally uh, psycholinguistics lecture, they are very, very dif uh, difficult. So thank you very much and hope that you will uh, you will try to understand that.